time here at the NHRA Mopar Park Summer Nationals. That's the Oldsmobile Pro Stocker of Warren Johnson headed to the lanes. He'll meet up with Ricky Smith. And here in the Corey McClan at the top fuel pits, Big Daddy, I'm told even when they get the engine back together, they're not going to test fire it. That's unusual. It is. They usually fire these engines, but it's a warm afternoon and there's a little shortage of time, so I guess they're going to try to make it without them. And they're not that long on parts either. Okay, here we go. The Bunny Car Final, the first of our professional finales, and it'll be the defending champion back again, Dell Worship. He will be in the far lane. Up against Chuck Etchells, you got to consider Worship a little bit of an underdog. Yes, you do, but you know he's got through every round so far by just being there. So maybe this is his lucky day, and he won't be a bridesmaid again. Hey, we called Worship an underdog last year, and he whipped Mark Oswald with the final round. Maybe we ought to get off of that. All right, here we go. Free stage, both drivers taking their time, getting positioned perfectly on the starting line. It is Etchells winning the Summer Nationals for the second time in three years in a 524, 279 miles an hour to Dell Worship's game, but short 545. Let's have one more look, Big Daddy. It was pretty even right off the mark. Yes, it was. Dell Worship might have taken a slight starting line advantage, but it wasn't enough to see with the naked eye. But from there on, it was Chuck Etchells. He began to gain a little bit in the initial start of the race and began to pull away as the cars reached the half track. And then the power of the Etchells motor came on strong and drove completely away. That one hole shot today, though, made all the difference. <laughs> Well, I can't really take all the credit for that. I was really just on time. Uh, Cruz was real late. Uh, maybe he saw McCulloch's red light in front of him or something. It scared him. I don't know. Uh, but you need to catch a break to win these races. And uh, being from, you know, being a New Jersey race, nobody beats the Wiz. Mother's performance, Mopar performance, Super Winch, Kendall Motorwell, Snap-on Tools. I mean... Uh, that's the whole litany. Congratulations. That's the whole litany, Steve. And thanks. That's, that gets us even for being short two years ago. We're still making up for that. Thanks. Sometimes you have to have a better memory for the list of sponsors than you do on how to drive a car. <laughs> how true. As far as points are concerned, Cruz Pentagon only picked up 50 points on John Force, his bonus for lower laps time. Chuck Etchells, however, is moved into sixth, and Bill Worship into the fourth spot. Here comes the Joe Amato car, ready for the top fuel finale against Corey McClanahan. Begin for our funny car champion Chuck Edwards here at the NHRA Mopar Park Summer Nationals, but we've still got two finales to go. Pro Stock and Top Fuel. First up will be Pro Stock. Warren Johnson with that Oldsmobile up against Ricky Smith with his Pontiac. Now they have elected to leave the borrowed Ekman engine under the hood of Ricky's car. I stopped by early to see what they were doing. It may take a clutch performance by that man, Ricky Smith, to beat Warren Johnson. And I don't mean the old sports cliche. I mean the actual clutch between the transmission and the engine. Ricky is trying to get the bell housing off. Meanwhile, inside the car, his 19-year-old son, Matthew, is ready to go to work. Matthew, that clutch is going to be your responsibility? Well, that's about mine and my dad's. So what do you think? What are you going to do? Have you decided? We don't know yet. We're going to look at a computer sheet. All right, well, they're trying to get a readout on the computer right now. My guess is they'll loosen it up a bit. The clutch, again, the heart of these racing vehicles, just like in Top Fuel and Funny Car. Well, the reason I say they might loosen it up a bit, uh, if the clutch is too tight, you shock the tires, you get it loose. That's what happened to Ekman in qualifying. In fact, there is Jerry Ekman. He can leave here the points leader as he came if Ricky Smith could beat Warren Johnson. Remember, Ricky Smith has never won an NHRA trade national event. He's been runner-up four times. Ricky Smith is doing his job, a huge hole shot, eight hundredths of a second. Ekman cheering him on. Oh, it is Warren Johnson. Ricky Smith loses a clutch right at the finish line, but I don't believe that was a factor. How about Warren Johnson, 721 to a 730, and you couldn't pick him without an instant replay. <laughs> Boy, but watch that starting line advantage by Ricky Smith. 
Warren Johnson was just a little bit of sleep on that one, and Ricky Smith certainly took advantage of it. And it looked like it was going to be all Smith as they motored down. But then the Warren Johnson engine began to come on as they neared the finish line. And it's just my opinion that a possibility that clutch in Smith's car started to give up a little bit earlier, allowing Johnson to just barely take the win. Now, Ricky Smith had eight hundreds off the starting line, but Warren Johnson had nine hundreds in performance. Here you can see the difference. Whoa, what a race. But that clutch coming out of Smith's car certainly had to be a factor because we saw the sparks as the car crosses the finish line, but there was damage occurring prior to that, so that would slow Smith down just a little bit at the end. Once again, the clutch makes the final decision. You weren't sure, though. Yeah, it was by a mile. <laughs> yeah, really? You needed all of a 721. We felt we could run a 20 or a 21 in a final. We made some changes of kind of like we had run the 20 and the 21 in the evening sessions before. We felt Ricky's going to try every trick he knew, which that's why they call him Tricky Ricky, but his <laughs> AC Delco Oldsmobile buried him. He made you stage first. You were taking no chances on a red light or making a mistake up there. No, I can stage first to last. That doesn't bother me at all. Some of these guys have to stage one way or the other, and it don't make a damn bit of difference to me. You've won the Summer Nationals. You've taken the points title. What a weekend. Perfect. Except for the 50,000. Well, that was yesterday. Well, Warren Johnson is referring to the special pro stock competition yesterday that he went out early in, and Larry Morgan won the $50,000 first prize. Well, for the first time this season, somebody besides Jerry Ekman is on top of the points, and that, of course, is Warren Johnson, the two of them starting to outdistance the rest of the field. Oh, boy. You're on board with Joe Amato. Joe Amato and Corey McClanathan. You've got to maybe go with Amato just on depth of parts and personnel, Vic. I want to go with McClendon. He's young. He's a, a lever. He's got to win this race. You know, he's won a national event already this year. I don't think Amato can cut him any slack. Well, as far as the big names are concerned, let's look what happened in the semifinal. I mean, McCullough, Pendergon, and John Force all go out with mistakes in one round. I haven't seen that in a long time. Bernstein goes out in the first round, smoking the tires. So I, you're right. Anything can happen here. Let's ride with Joe Amato because we can. Straight and strong, it is a bottom and a ball of fire for the runner-up, Corey McClanathan. Joe Amato has won the Summer Nationals for the second time in his career. We see the fire coming out around the head of Corey McClanathan's car. He obviously blew a head gasket, that's what we saw. Not real serious damage, but enough to put him out of the race. They'll uh, get down and put a few extinguishers on that, put it right out, but nothing to be concerned about. About his time in the final, a 501 to a 518, and I think of the replay, Corey Mack had used up Joe Amato the first half of the racetrack, was ahead of him. He certainly did. He took a starting line advantage that he could certainly be proud of, but it was down course where the head gasket comes out. You can see it starting to go right now, and that's where Amato makes his strong move. Lots of smoke coming out, and then the fire, and it was all Amato. So let's take a ride with the motto with the in-car camera. On the wing, if you please, to see just what it's like. He steps on it, the fire comes out of the pipes. 5,000 horsepower there, folks. That's a lot of power. Joe, you didn't try to murder him. You just tried to beat him with a 501. It's any of our games, Teddy. You know, that's, that's how we win championships, you know. Bernstein's out there running 300, and we're just trying to be steady, you know. We didn't have all that power. It's easy to smoke the tires. We just struggled all weekend to try and get it down the track and uh, pay dividends. And you were virtually deadlocked now with Kenny and the Winston points. Well, that's that's what it's all about. You know, we struggle a little bit. He struggles a little bit. But I'm sure it's going to come right down to the end. You know, it's a real pleasure for Team Valvoline and Keystone and Key Parts. And we've been steady all weekend. Congrats. Second win this season. It was a little payback. Last year, we... Joe Amato red-lighted, so this year I was a little nervous, you know, against LaHaye, so paybacks are good, and God looks over you all the time. Indeed. So, for Don Garlitz, I'm Steve Evans saying so long from Englishtown, New Jersey, for NBC Sports World. This has been NBC Sports World, and today it was brought to you by Goodyear, number one in tires. By Autolite Spark Plugs, guaranteed for two years, no matter how far you go. By Sony, where imagination and innovation create the ultimate in auto sound. By Mopar Parts and the Chrysler Plymouth, Dodge, Dodge Truck, Jeep and Eagle dealers who sell and install them. And by Craftsman, a line of 1,600 hand tools made in America.